Welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about Cauchy's estimate. Uh, for this, first I will consider some domain G in my complex plane. So, so this is my domain G. And I hope you are familiar with the term domain in the complex plane. In the complex plane or in the complex analysis domain when we are considering a domain that means it is open and connected so g is open and connected set right and and then i consider a function f which is analytic on this domain g right. so i will take some function f and if is analytic on this domain G. Right, now I have a fun function f which is analytic on my domain G. Right, then I choose any arbitrary point simple A. Right, so it can be any point on this domain G. Right, then what can I do? Since this domain G is open and connected, I can choose capital R, which is greater than zero or positive, such that BAR closure, that means the closed ball whose center is simple A and radius is capital R is lying inside my domain G right that means I can choose capital R such that this closed ball is completely lying inside my domain G right okay now uh, why did I choose a closed ball the reason for choosing a closed ball is to apply the Cauchy's integral formula, I need to make sure that my function is analytic on the boundary, right? If I if I choose an open ball, sometimes my boundary would be lying uh, on this boundary on my domain G, right? So, but if I choose my ball completely inside, if I choose a closed ball which lies completely inside the domain G then then I can make sure that my function f is analytic on the boundary right then I will consider the boundary of my circle or boundary of my closed circle so I will name name that curve as gamma t gamma t will be a plus capital R e to the power i t and t is in between 0 and 2 pi, right? That means at t equals 0, I will be somewhere here. And when I'm increasing t, I will traverse through my boundary in the counterclockwise direction. That's the idea, right? Now I can apply Cauchy's integral formula because I know that my function f is analytic on the boundary and also I know that my function f is analytic inside this disk, so I can apply Cauchy's integral formula. By Cauchy's integral formula, I can state that nth derivative at point A is going to be equal to factorial n divided by 2 pi i integral of a gamma gamma is the circle whose center is a and radius is capital r if z divided by z minus a to the power n plus 1 d z right. so what is the idea of Cauchy's integral formula that means you can find the nth derivative of point A 
by using the boundary values of your function f because you are going to integrate this quantity over the boundary of the circle and you know the values of or values of your function f on the boundary right okay now the next task is to uh, find an estimate to the derivative at point a right let's proceed so i am going to take the modulus of both sides so on the left hand side i will get f and a and on the right hand side i will get f z divided by z minus a to the power n plus one d z and then from the triangle inequality this will become factorial n divided by 2 pi integral of a gamma f z modulus divided by z minus a to the power n plus 1 d z right now I know that Z is varying on the boundary, right? So I know that Z is in gamma t. So I can say that the modulus of Z minus A is going to be capital R, right? So I can further simplify this and then I will get factorial N divided by 2 pi integral over gamma if we said modulus divided by capital R to the power n plus 1 d z modulus right now I can take capital R to the power n plus 1 out of my integral because it is a constant so this is going to be equal to factorial n divided by 2 phi r to the power n plus 1 integral over gamma f z d z right now i came to this point now what can you say about the function values on the curve gamma gamma is a closed circle so it is a compact set in the complex plane right so i can say that gamma is a compact set because it is a closed circle right so if it's the modulus of f is at has a maximum maximum on gamma right and i will call that maximum as capital m so m is going to be equal to the maximum of f z where z is in c a r right okay right now uh, again i will come to this point this point right that's where i stopped my simplification so i reached this point is less than or equal factorial n divided by 2 pi integral over gamma modulus of f z d z right now i know that the maximum of the modulus will be capital m right so therefore this integral is going to be less than or equal to integral over gamma capital M D Z because capital M is the maximum that is attained by the function F on this circle right now capital M is a constant so I can take that out Two pi r to the power n plus 1 capital M integral gamma D Z modulus right now I am going to do this task 
this is your curve gamma and you are going to divide this gamma into small pieces and you are going to add those pieces so and i know that the center is a and radius is capital r so what can you say about this quantity it is going to be 2 pi r because you are going to collect all those small quantities then you will complete the circle right okay now this is going to be equal to factorial n divided by 2 pi r to the power n plus 1 capital m times 2 pi r then 2 pi to 2 pi gets cancelled and 1 r is getting cancelled and you will get factorial n times capital m divided by capital r to the power n right so this is the conclusion right okay so i reached this point the derivative of point a less than or equal to factorial n times capital m divided by r to the power n so capital um, and remember that capital m is the maximum of the uh, maximum of the modulus of fz that is attained on this circle right so this is called as Cauchy's estimate right so i estimated the nth derivative at point a by using the boundary values of my function f right so and also remember that when you are proving this result you have to consider a circle right right and also i used another trick that is i drew i have chosen my closed ball in such a way that that is completely lying inside my domain g right because i needed to make sure that my function is analytic on the boundary right so this is the conclusion of this result and in the next video i will discuss how to prove the leoville's theorem by using this result thank you for watching